Uh, I'd love to invite our opening speaker, Mia Beers, who's the um, Deputy Assistant Administrator Administrator for the Bureau for Resilience, Environment, and Food Security. Mia, if you'd like to come up and uh, open for us, and then we'll move on to uh, Dean Carlin, the Chief Economist for USAID, and then we'll introduce some of our lead uh, speakers for the sessions. Okay, Mia, thank you. Great, thank you. All right, and I'm just going to leave this. Is everyone okay with just having, let's see here, this up in the room while Mia speaks? And then as soon as we start sharing slides, the slides will be what we see in the room. Great. Thanks, everyone. And good morning and good afternoon for those that are jo joining us from overseas. I really want to take a moment before I jump into some remarks to really thank the full team that supports the Feed the Future Innovation Lab on markets, risks, and resilience at UC Davis. So MMR Lab, because we love acronyms for short, <clears throat> for hosting this week's forum and um, inviting me to share a few USAID perspectives. But in particular, many thanks, and I'm looking around above the laptop to uh, Professor Michael Carter, who is the director of the lab, and want to acknowledge her too, who is the associate director joining remotely from California, and Sophie and Sarah, who are in charge of external engagement and communications, who have really worked so hard for the last few uh, months to make this week's forum a really great opportunity for learning and discussion. And obviously, also great thanks to Dean Carlin, our USA chief economist who's going to be speaking on the first panel and who has also been instrumental in the development of this forum. But maybe just to start with then, um, the Bureau for Resilience, Environment and Food Security hopes to bring together food security experts and ex general experts, I should say, on food, nutrition and water security, along with teams focused on biodiversity, nature-based solutions and climate. We also co-lead um, Feed the Future, which is, for those that are not familiar, the U.S. government's global hunger initiative that works in more than 40 countries around the world to reduce extreme poverty and malnutrition, the latter especially among women and children, and to help strengthen resilience. And we partner to build stronger food systems that are sustainable and inclusive, empower women and increase capacities to withstand shocks, including those that are climate related. So we know that achieving our objectives is never going to be easy, but accelerating climate change and impacts make them even more challenging. Our updated global food security strategy, which was approved last year, which guides Feed the Future, elevates and integrates climate change more robustly than ever. And at the heart of our work is the development scaling of innovations that help increase productivity, incomes and resilience in ways that help make quality uh, diets more affordable to low income families in both rural and urban settings. I think we really need to bear that in mind um, when we're seeking to do this via smallholder farmers, herders, fishers, who are often risk averse for good reason that we've seen in the field. And um, our Feed the Future program and research investments really aim to help them find ways to reduce and manage those risks. So a, a social and behavior change approach is vital to improving food security and nutrition outcomes because it really seeks to put people and behaviors at the heart of problem solving. But you ask, what is a behavior? Behaviors are really what people do, whether caregivers, family, community, religious leaders, whether you're a farmer, a health worker, a market vendor, or even policymakers. We all seek to practice different behaviors that can influence food security and nutrition. This is why we need high quality social and behavior change interventions. So part of what the lab has been looking at that engage in all of the various uh, folks um, across different sectors who have a, a, a vital role to play in improving development outcomes. So for example, we know that innovations are essential for adv advancing climate information services for all agricultural development. but are they reaching everyone? That's the key question for some of our Feed the Future research partners are, well, people are not only asking, but really putting research into the service of answering many of these challenges. And we do see partnerships at the key to helping advance this work. Again, one of the key um, labs that we have be the future are, is the MRR lab. And um, we really um, grateful and appreciative that we've helped to build capacity of African research institutes um, by working in partnership with 
so many US researchers to identify needed interventions, and most importantly, take those lessons and help bring them to scale. So the director of the International Center for Evaluation Development, David Emiao, joining us remotely today, leads all in initiatives for the MRR Lab. So this initiative puts African research institutions and researchers in the lead, with US researchers in a much more supporting role. This example of locally led research, development, and innovation is a great example um, embodying what USAID is promoting in terms of localization and also really putting and putting putting and promoting African solutions with Africans in the lead as it should be. So to advance USAID ambitious objectives, we need to integrate behavioral change across our programming, which is why we're really looking forward and very excited um, about this uh, MRR lab. And the fact that we're having this discussion over the next couple of days, particularly in this forum, which provides us a chance to listen and learn about the latest um, innovations and in behavioral economics. I We were just talking about this um, just before we came in here about when's the last term we really, last time we really dove into this subject, particularly with so many of our missions um, online. As an example, so I just wanted to give a couple of examples and then I'll close, but as an example of um, some of the inspiring research uh, that the lab is doing, um, is how the bundling of crop insurance and drought tolerance seeds showed a 40% increase in food security outcomes in research that the MRR lab conducted in Tanzania and Mozambique, which is really, really quite interesting. Another innovative example from the lab is from research conducted in Zambia that showed a household budgeting tool increased savings led to a much more effective budgeting throughout the year and uh, much more of a financial cushion through the lean season, during the lean season at the household level. But this planning approach is cheaper and easier to scale than other approaches to address um, seasonal hunger, particularly if you're looking at large scale approaches. But again, it's these kind of learnings that we want to take that uh, scale these types of interventions from the research that could really benefit millions of rural families. So on that, I just wanted to thank you so much for taking the time to join all of us for this really important discussion where hopefully not only will everyone learn, but you'll share your learnings and hopefully have some of your questions answered. And I do wanna also highlight that um, a year of, I can share a year of monthly webinars focused on various behavioral economics topics will follow this two day uh, forum. So the learning and discussion does not stop here. So please consider joining those discussions as well. And with that, thank you very much. I hand back to UC Davis. Thanks everyone.